So this is what we got popping off over here. Stuff going down in Boston. All right. Massachusetts turns recreational plex into shelter for homeless families, including migrants. Let me ask y'all something. Is that what the taxpayers paid for? Did the taxpayers pay for this? They just took the rec center. Look at that. That's a running track. Look like on the top floor. They just took the rec recreational track and turned it into a migrant shelter. You think people happy about that? If you guys think that people are happy about that, give me a thumbs up. If you guys think that they're not happy about that, give me a thumbs down. That's what they doing out here. They just doing like that. You know what I'm saying? Making gorilla moves like that. You know what I'm saying? Massachusetts Governor Maura Healy and Boston Mayor Michelle Wu toured a recreational complex Wednesday hours ahead of its planned opening as temporary shelter site for families experiencing homelessness, including migrants. Healy said about 75 individuals were expected to arrive at the Case Recreational Complex located in the city's Roxbury neighborhood before the end of the day. The complex can provide temporary shelter for up to 400 people or about 100 to 125 families as the state continues to grapple with an influx of homeless migrants. OK. We're here today because we don't really have a choice, she said. Families continue to come into this country. We continue to come uh, continue to come to Massachusetts. And we have, over the last several months, opened up locations throughout the state. So now let me ask you guys a question. Is that accurate, what she said? Is that true? Is that is that accurate or true? Make that make sense. And real quick, ladies and gentlemen, shout out to Black Free Thinker. Please make sure you guys show Black Free Thinker some love. Throw some flames, radiation emoji in the chat for Black Free Thinker. Black Free Thinker says Texas has to be overwhelmed by now. It's time to send them back and stop with the hemorrhaging of resources, which ought to go to U.S. citizens. Big facts, bro. I agree with that 100 percent. If you all agree with Black Free Thinker, please give me lots of thumbs up in the chat. If you guys disagree, then give me a thumbs down. But I don't know how you could agree with that. Or I, mean, I don't know how you could disagree with that. That's about as accurate as it gets. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, Win Loser Rug, with the $20 super chat. Make sure you guys show Win Loser Rug some love. Definitely appreciate you, bro, bro. Win Loser Rug said, appreciation for this fire late night stream. Yo, I'm glad you enjoying it, bro. Y'all already know. Anytime I got time and I'm able to, I got something for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to, like I said, I'm going to be cutting up clips. I got the clips coming. Hopefully, y'all enjoying those clips. Remember, when you guys watch the clips or when you guys watch the uh, replay live streams, the most important thing is to make sure you hit that box in the bottom left-hand corner after you when it pops up. As soon as you see that box pop up in the bottom left-hand corner, make sure that you hit that box. All right? Have you guys been seeing that box and hitting it? If you guys have, give me a thumbs up. If you guys haven't, give me a thumbs down. All right. So now here it says there are look at this. Look at this. There are currently three larger operated overflow family shelter sites. The location in Roxbury, one of the city's traditionally black neighborhoods, will be the fourth. So people need to start paying attention to what goes on in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Roxbury, Massachusetts. Okay. The others are located in Revere, Quincy, and Cambridge. Okay. Those using overflow sites are among 656 families currently on a wait list hoping to get into the state's emergency family shelter program. Healy last year capped the number of people in the shelter program at 7,500 and created the wait list. Healy and Wu, both Democrats, have called on the Biden administration for more help in dealing with the influx of migrants. Boston isn't alone. So now, why are these why do these Democrat cities continue to shill and cover for Biden and the Democrats when Biden and the Democrats continuously, they continuously and repeatedly Leave these people hanging. Man, they get left hanging all the time. Yeah, shout out to Hurricane IQ. Hurricane IQ said the Chicago video is blowing up almost 3K. Yeah, make sure if you guys haven't watched that video, y'all go over there and run those numbers up on that bad boy. <laughs> run them numbers up on that Chicago video. You know what I'm saying? 
I hear from mayors all around the country on a regular basis. I just had two conversations in the last couple of days around the stresses and challenges that this crisis of migrant families needing services and shelters and homes are presenting at every level of government, she said. The federal machinery needs a lot of fixing, she added. It needs action and it needed that for decades. Healy said the Roxbury site is temporary and families will be out before June. Now remember, that's what they said to people in Chicago and then it didn't end up happening. You guys remember that in Chicago, they told those people that they would be using that shelter temporarily. And then the city councilwoman came back and said, well, they're not going to be getting the city, the, the shelter back. Like, make it make sense. She said programs that were scheduled to take place at the center will be moved to other nearby locations and that renovations will be made to the complex. She also said that the state will rely on local businesses to provide some of the services needed to run the shelter site. I'm grateful to the community of Roxbury, Healy said. All right. Clifton A. Braithwaite, who is 56, a city council candidate and community activist, said she's concerned about seniors and others who rely on programs at the center as a place to meet and exercise and the fact that those people paid into that. Those people paid into that and now they're not going to be able to use it and it's going to be used for people who didn't pay into it. I don't know if the plan they have is going to work for either immigrants or Boston citizens, he said. But one thing I know to close a functional building down for three months that services the people of this community is a tragedy because where are they going to go? Audra White, who is 41, lives around the corner from the recreational complex and said she was troubled when she returned from a vacation in September and saw homeless migrants and their children sleeping on the floor at Logan International Airport. So they've been sleeping on the floor at these other airports, too. They've been sleeping on the floor at these other airports, too. It's not just going on in Chicago. Logan Airport is not an appropriate place to have people living in hallways, she said. At the cast, there are showers, there are bathrooms, people can actually wash, she said, referring to the cast recreational complex. It's not a it's not a home. It's amazing how they can sit there and say, well, it's in that you can't sleep on the floor at the airport because it's not a home, but you can sleep some, uh, at the rec center. But the rec center is not a home either. Like the logic that you're using to justify why they shouldn't sleep at the airport is the logic that you're using to justify why they should take the recreation center away from the people who paid for it and repurpose it for people that didn't pay for it. If that makes sense, give me a thumbs up. If that doesn't make any sense, give me an angry face. In Chicago, Mayor Brandon Johnson has announced that the city will again extend its 60-day limit on shelter stays for asylum seekers, just days ahead of a deadline that could have evicted nearly 2,000 migrants. Johnson said Monday, the idea is to give people more time to resettle and find work. Now, how are they going to find work if the same Democrats are complaining, saying that they don't have access to work because of legislation? These very same Democrats said, well, we need to create programs for them and make legislation so that they're able to work. So if they haven't done any of that yet, what is extending their shelter stay going to do to help them find work? Like the arguments that they're using don't even make any sense. Their arguments don't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? And real quick, shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate everybody that's in here. We got 41 people watching and we got 37 likes. If everybody can bang on that like button and get us to 70, that'd be great. Also, if you guys haven't shared, make sure that you guys share. If you're watching on another social media platform, make sure you share from that other social media platform that you're watching. Definitely appreciate it. The policy change adds 30 to 60 more days for roughly 14,000 migrants already living in the city's 28 shelters, which include warehouses and park district buildings. As many as 800 asylum seekers have lived temporarily at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport, sleeping on the floor and on cots at a shuttle bus center. Some stay there for weeks at a time while they await beds at one of the city's 28 shelters or can make other arrangements. Chicago's daily migrant dashboard showed 128 living at O'Hare as of Wednesday. How many people have seen this Chicago migrant dashboard? Anybody ever seen this? This is interesting. If you guys have seen the Chicago migrant dashboard, give me a thumbs up. If you guys haven't, give me a thumbs down. 
if you guys haven't seen it, we're going to take a quick look at it once we get through this article here. OK. Look at this. I don't know if y'all ever saw that TV show called The Strain, but this looks scary and weird with, the, with, with, all, with this like this. This looks really weird. <laughs> 